Dr. Shane, and I am in the Situation Room. And today we're going to talk about a recent situation. You all have seen it in the news. Michael Jordan and Lori Harvey break up. Everyone's shocked or not shocked, right? Not shocked or not, or shocked. So, yes, to be shocked or not to be shocked. So, anyways, picture perfect marriage, rich, handsome, famous, got it all. And boy, they break up. Some people are like, ah, seem too perfect, seem staged, you know, all those things. But boy, how could they not make it, we may ask. That's an okay question. The question that gets us in trouble is when we start comparing ours to theirs and saying we don't have what it takes because, boy, they got it all. I don't know. I don't know. Because I think one of the biggest things I've seen with couples in terms of superpowers isn't money, isn't fortune, and fame. Friendship. Not saying they weren't friends, but friends generally make it. But I won't digress. So when we compare ourselves to others, neighbors, you know, they got a nicer house, their grass is greener, their kids are smarter, their kids are better athletes. Boy, I bet you they got all their credit cards paid for. You know, we just go down a rabbit hole and we compare their life to ours. And we don't recognize that we're comparing our B-roll to their trailer. So the B-roll is like the alternative footage, right? Stuff we might use for a backup scene or whatever the case may be. But the trailer is finally edited and we just get the best parts of the movie. We don't really know if it's a good movie. But the trailer doesn't care about that. It just wants us to show that it's a good movie. So one of the first things I noticed when I started to work with couples is what I called the perfect dance. The perfect dance. So have any of you ever compared yourself to this couple? They come in the party. And they look perfect. I mean, they finish each other's sentence. They finger food each other and... Boy, they got that magic touch. They have kept the fires burning. And sometimes it's real. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's not. And you catch yourself comparing your life, your B-roll, to their trailer. Has anyone ever had that happen? You guys go to the comments. Tell me who you are, where you're from. And if that ever happened to you, I want you to go into the college and type in B-roll. Because you're comparing your B-roll to their trail. And I say it because I've had those couples come in. In fact, when I opened my practice and I first did, people said, what do you do? Do you do sheets for magazines? I said, no, why do you ask? It's because you got all these perfect looking couples. I was like, ah, I guess it would seem that way because like the beautiful people come and you're just looking. They got challenges. Sometimes they'll come in the first 15 minutes. They'll start doing their perfect dance. And I'll be like, why'd you come to see me? We only got 35 more minutes here. And they go into the story and they have problems too. It's okay. You're not alone. They're not alone. And if you're one of the perfect couples or looking anyways, get help. You know who you are. You're the type that everyone thinks, boy, if we broke up, the world will fall apart. Or they come to us for advice. We have our own challenges. All couples do. So I had this one couple. We'll call them the Browns, right? They would go to the party and do this perfect dance. And one night they were telling me about it. And they said, and it really felt worse when we came home. Because we didn't speak two weeks before. We didn't speak the drive there. We didn't speak the way back. We didn't speak the week after. And finally, boy, we set an appointment. And it's just lonely. So I'm saying to you, don't compare yourself with the Joneses all the time because just when you catch up with them, they frequently refinance. So look at you. Look at your friendship. If you need support, get the support. But don't compare yourself to someone's trailer because you might be feeling far less happy than you should because you never know their situation. So every couple has problems. Every couple has problems. And when you get married, you just decide on a different set of problems. For example... Jack and Jill, right? Everybody knows them. They go up the hill. Well, they get married in my version of the story. And Jill is with Jack. And they're at a party. And Jill's like, I never noticed what a fault wallflower he is. That Jack, boy, he is boring. And he doesn't 
talk to nobody at the party. He doesn't shake hands. He doesn't make a real impression. So her mind drifts, right? She wonders. You all have wondered, right? Boy, what would it be like if I had married so-and-so? How many, if you did go to the browser and type in so-and-so, but you're not to let your spouse to see it, right? So if you think that, she did too. And she said, what if I had married Jamal? Oh, yeah, that Jamal, he's not boring. He's not a wallflower at all. I mean, he had been out there starting and ending the party. And then she remembers, yeah, but after two, three, four drinks, instead of making a party being fun, he'd be the funny one because he'd be the butt of the joke so they couldn't handle his liquor. So she stops. She thinks again. Yeah, but that Justin, yeah, he would have come into his designer cuffs and designer custom shirts designer suits, exotic car. But would he have come? He's a workaholic, you know. Sometimes he shows up. Sometimes he even shows up on time, but most time he shows up late. He leaves early or he doesn't come because a big project always takes precedent. So I say it to say we all have challenges. If you need help, get the help. Anyways, this is Dr. Shane, and I thank you for listening to this broadcast. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, I'll take a thumbs down. Sometimes people like that hit too close to home. And I look forward to seeing you in one of our future podcasts. Make it a great day. Bye-bye. Dr. Shane. All right.